in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. Ved Mehta Otha, Journalist New York, USA For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Corinthians 13.12 Drawing upon this quotation for the title of his autobiography Face to Face, Ved Mehta projects the world of a shy, sensitive blind boy, born in the twilight days of the British Raj and the birth of Indian independence with its baptism of fire. Ved became blind through meningitis at the age of three in 1937. Perhaps the greatest single influence in his life was his daddy G, a doctor in the government health services, who had vowed to give his son every opportunity he could. I will sell my soul, he wrote, to give him the highest education possible. But in the India of those days, very few facilities for the blind existed. Ved was sent to the Dadar School for the Blind, when he was five, for a couple of years. After that he had some desultory schooling at the Immersion Institute, Lahore, and at St. Dunstan's, Deharadun. Convinced that there was no future for him in India, both Ved and his father turned their thoughts to the West. Desperately Ved opened correspondence with educational authorities in Europe and America and after months of unbearable suspense, gained admission to the Arkansas School for the Blind. Ved flew to the States in 1949. Throughout his school career at Arkansas, as well as later on at Pomona College, California, he proved himself highly intelligent. He graduated a year ahead of his class, he secured the highest scholastic average and received several awards. At the same time he developed at a passionate longing to be treated as normal. He achieved a remarkable degree of mobility and threw away his white cane. He could not brook pity. As Dam Moraz, his friend and contemporary at Oxford, observed, he intensely disliked people who tried to help him. From America he sailed to England to Balliol College, Oxford. Here it was that he felt encouraged to bring out his autobiography, dictating it entirely to two of his friends. This was a pointer of things to come. Since then, he has author Ed, The New Theologian, Fly and the Fly Bottle and Delinquent Chacha. At 26 he became a staff writer on The New Yorker and has since also contributed. Articles and short stories to American British and Indian publications, which have received high critical acclaim everywhere. No doubt he has a great abiding love for America, for she has shown him what a full life can be, but his roots are deep in the soil of India. Twice has he come home again, drawn by an irresistible impulse. Impressions of his earlier visit in the summer of 1959 are jotted down in the book Walking the Indian Streets, whilst Portrait of India. A Vatier volume gives a colorful kaleidoscope of people and places he came across in the course of his travels throughout India in 1967. Earlier in his autobiography, Ved, then barely 23, had written, What is needed is a living example that if given the proper opportunities the blind can succeed. Such an example from the outside can do much in creating opportunities. Might he not have been speaking prophetically of himself, unawares? Deepak Motiwala Solicitor, Bombay The first and only blind solicitor of Bombay, and for that matter in the country, this is the outstanding achievement that stands to the credit of Deepak Motiwala, young, quiet and confident. Not only that, Deepak stood first class first in the solicitor's examination of 1975, topping the list of candidates who were all cited. He is at present working with the leading firm of Bombay solicitors Mullah and Mullah and Kreji, Blunt and Caro. But then, Deepak has always had a brilliant academic career right from the time he was schooling at the New Activity Street. Theresa Schools, 
and through St. Xavier's College, where he obtained the James Taylor Prize for the highest in economics and marks modern history, to the Government Law College where he secured a first class in all three examinations, and several prizes. In 1971 the Rotary Club of him the Best Bombay gave student award. Asked for his opinion on the legal profession as a profitable field of employment for the blind, Deepak stated that one must have the necessary finances and the time and the opportunity to do a lot of reading which is absolutely essential. In fact, a full-time reader is almost indispensable. He also felt that the reading material and reference books so far available in Braille are quite inadequate and should be substantially increased. This of course may not be economically feasible unless many more blind persons go in for law. He showed his grateful appreciation for the help extended to him by the Talking Book Studio of the National Association for the Blind which specially recorded for him on tapes such legal volumes as Company Law, Criminal Procedure and other textbooks which he could study at any time he chose without depending on a reader. Apart from formidable legal tomes, Deepak goes in for a lot of general reading, his favourites being George Bernard Shaw and Winston Churchill. Cricket has also been an all-consuming passion with him though he can no longer take an active part in it himself, as he used to do before he lost his vision, which was at the age of 14, due, he says, to looking directly at a solar eclipse. Now, at 26, Deepak is on the threshold of his career. It's a safe bet that we are going to hear a lot more of this bright young man in the years to come. Dr. Ramesh Nigam Consultant Surgeon Professor of Surgery and Student Counselor Maulana Azad Medical College, New Delhi The long sensitive fingers of a surgeon clasped round the knife that heals, a life devoted to the medical profession. But at the height of a brilliant career Dr. Ramesh Nigam was faced with the tragedy of blindness. Undaunted, he determined to stay within his chosen field and triumphantly proved his mettle. At the time of his blindness Dr. Nigam was professor and head of the Department of Surgery at the Maulana Azad Medical College and Ivan Hospital, New Delhi. Because of the calamity he was retained on a contract basis at a reduced salary. But he proved to everyone's satisfaction that he could perform all the duties assigned to him as well as any other professor of the medical college and he was restored to regular government service. Today, Dr. Nigam teaches surgery to both the undergraduate and postgraduate students of this college and gives lectures to postgraduate students of Delhi University. He takes ward and outpatients clinics, advises surgical treatment and in lieu of actual surgery, is a student counsellor having organised the entire counselling service in this institution. He also conducts research under the Indian Council for Medical Research. The doctor has one unqualified acceptance and esteem from staff and students alike and is in great demand as a guest lecturer by medical practitioners. He can look back with pride publications to his credit. He was a first-class student throughout, winning 17 gold and silver medals and several certificates. In the FRCS studies subsidized by the National Book Trust, India, he has stood first in the primary fellowship examination of the has also written a chapter in the Royal College of Surgeons of Textbook on Surgery published by Butterwords of England and was awarded the Hallett Prize in 1946. In 1958 he was elected a Fellow of the American College of Surgeons. He has been a teacher in a medical college for 31 years and a professor of surgery for 29. During this time, he has held several important posts including that of professor and head of the Department of Surgery and Chief Surgeon at Nagpur Medical College, 1948-59. For 20 years he has been a member of the governing body of the Association of Surgeons of India and for 27 years a member of the editorial board of the Indian Journal of Surgery. The erudite doctor has several publications to his credit. He has contributed 27 original papers to various national and international magazines. In the Government of India Republic Day Awards, 1973, 
The Padma Shri was bestowed upon Dr. Nigam by the President of India for meritorious service in the field of surgery and medical education. A busy schedule of work and the total devotion of his wife and children have enabled him to prove that it is ability that counts and not disability. Jagdish Patel Physiotherapist Ahmedabad Most people when asked to talk about themselves Hold forth at length not so Jagdish Patel. He kept sidetracking the issue, veering off to blind welfare work in Gujarat, which shows how deeply he identifies himself with it. Born in 1928 in Visad, Kerala district, he became blind in 1936 due to meningitis. His father was a doctor in Calcutta, and in 1938 Jagdish joined the Calcutta Blind School. In 1941, However, because of the threat of Japanese bombardment in World War II, the family returned Ed to Nadiad and his father start at his practice in Ahmedabad. Thereafter Jagdish had his education at the Victoria Memorial School for the Blind, Bombay as well as at the Mehsana School for the Blind, Gujarat. At that time, recalls Jagdish, the blind schools were more like ashrams, where the children were kept, fed and taught a little music and nothing much else. In 1944 he did a course in physiotherapy from the Victoria Memorial School and worked for one year in the school clinic in 1947. And then on 1st January 1948 he opened his own clinic in Ahmedabad with the help of his father. It did well enough to encourage him to open another one in 1968, where he has employed one sighted and to blind assistants. Physiotherapy is a paying profession, says Jagdish, proud of being an income tax pair himself, but the blind are not able to make any headway in it because of stiff competition from sighted physiotherapists and because no recognized school of physiotherapy is prepared to accept blind students, unlike schools abroad. Without a recognized degree or diploma, blind physiotherapists naturally find their scope exceedingly limited. After setting up in practice, Jagdish carried on with his education, completing his SSC in 1956 and his BA in 1962 from Gujarat University. Along with that, he involved himself deeply with blind WEL fair work to such an extent that today he hardly has time for anything else. Since 1950 he is the Honorary General Secretary of the Blind Mains Association, Ahmedabad. He is also on the Executive Council of the National Association for the Blind. Recalling the phases in the growth of the Blind Mains Association, Ahmedabad, started. Originally in 1947 at Surat, he mentioned the holding of the first Provincial Conference for the Blind in 1948 and the first All India Conference for the Blind in 1951 resulting in the creation of the National Association for the Blind. The Blind Mains Association Ahmedabad was also responsible for establishing the first school for blind girls, 1954, Recreation A, 1956, an adult training centre, 1959, a technical school, 1968, a talking book library, 1972, and an adult workshop for the handicapped, 1975. Jagdish is also a member of several service organizations such as Lions International, Junior Chamber of Commerce, he was the president of the Lions Club of Vijayanagar. Widely travelled, he is married to Bhadrabain who is a MA. BT and a keen worker herself in the field of blind welfare. Whose band and wife work together, hand in hand, for a cause to both deeply which they are committed. Ratnakar Murlidhar Raje Sales Representative Associated Cement Company Bombay A sales representative attached to the Cement Marketing Division, Associated Cement Company Limited, Bombay, Ratnakar Murlidhar Raje never hesitates to work overtime or on weekends to fulfill his duties, which include personal contacts with clients, substantial correspondence and phone calls. A victim of smallpox which left him blind when he was eight. Rajesh spent nearly 10 years at home without any sort of education. 
but he kept himself so well informed through books and newspapers read out to him by friends and relatives that though he joined school very late he stood second from his class at the SSC examination. He went on to obtain his BA degree from Wilson College, his MA from the Department of Political Science, Bombay University, and his LL.B. from the Government Law College. In 1964 he proceeded to the United States and did his MA in International Relations from the New School for Social Research, New York. Part of the funds needed for the trip he obtained through a Tata Trust scholarship and part from Pandit Nehru's private fund. When Mr Nehru accorded him his special audience request, Rajay was naturally thrilled. He went to America unescorted and to maintain himself he worked part time there giving tuitions in Hindi and Marathi to India bound peace corps workers Then he was back home and became a contract officer at the workshop for the blind Bombay But Rajay was keen securing work in open industry to prove to others that a blind man can be a success at a normal job As a contract officer he had good contacts with industrial firms and he approached them for employment The appointment to his present post was made in 1970 Of him his employees say Mr Rajay has been with the ACC since February 1970 as a salesman assigned mainly to the collection of outstanding payments and sales promotion of ACC as general products After a short initial training to AC quaint him with his job He has independently attended to his without any special duties from other staff assistance members. By his intelligent, regular and conscientious approach, he has all along discharged his duties very satisfactorily and by sincere and diligent work he has established good contacts with A.A.CS clientele, both government and non-government at various levels. His regular and diligent follow-ups have in an appreciable measure expedited recovery of substantial amounts due to the company despite his physical handicap he has proved his worth as an independent worker in march 1970 to mr rajay was selected by the committee appointed by naseo as the best employee in his category from bombay for the year 1971 and was given a certificate of merit an award that was fully deserved by his amiable nature capabilities and performance He has become a welcome addition to the ACC family. Hemant J Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind India